and Jeannie, who are like my spiritual mum and dad and have just invested so much in me. So I'm so privileged to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. And yeah, I just pray this morning that you are inspired. Uh, I am talking to the mums at the beginning, but men, don't switch off, okay? <laughs> There's a word for you as well. And I'm, I know that um, you've been following through on the armour of God. You're in the middle of a series. So <clears throat> I think you've done the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. So here I am this morning to talk about shoes. Yay! <laughs> All the ladies suddenly perk up. Yes, shoes. <laughs> Our feet um, fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And um, when, when I heard this was the topic, I was like, hmm, because I do like shoes, but I'm not like totally over the top, <laughs> maybe in some cases. <laughs> uh, I have worn some crazy ones in my time. But, you know, I started to think about what does that actually mean and what does it mean for us uh, as women and what does it mean for our mums? And I got this beautiful verse, yes. Uh, Mike shared this with me, and it's an incredible verse from the book of Psalms, and it says, The Lord announces the word, and the women who proclaim it are a mighty throng. Amen. Yes, yes. Are you a mighty throng this yeah. morning, ladies? We know that, um, I know that us girls, we like to talk. Uh, we, we have no trouble, generally speaking, um, to chat and to talk, and in fact, um, I think... You know, scientifically, mathematically, I'm not sure what the term, you know, seven or eight times more words are spoken by a woman than a man in general. So, you know, girls, we're good. <laughs> so we are a mighty throng. We have an opportunity as women to step into spaces that um, are open to us, you know, coffee shops, schools, um, our workplaces, sports teams, to actually really talk about the love of Jesus. So this morning I wanted to start talking about a woman, Hannah, I don't know if you know Hannah's story. Hannah uh, was married to Elkanah, and he had two wives. And one of his wives, Penina, was pro prolific, or, uh, proficient in producing children. And she had many of them, and she gave Hannah a really rough time. And Hannah, instead of wallowing, well, she wallowed a little in her misery. But what she did, and I love this, she went to the Lord. And uh, so we pick up her story in the book of 1 Samuel. So it says, once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Hannah was deep in anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord, as she made this vow. O Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. I don't know about you ladies, but you know, all the mums in the house, I'm sure that you would echo the cry of Hannah's heart, that you would love to see your children dedicated to the Lord, walking in his footsteps, knowing his voice, knowing who they are as the children, yeah, as children of the king. So as she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her. And seeing her lips moving but hearing no sound, he thought she had been drinking. <laughs> Must you come here drunk, he demanded. Throw away your wine. Oh no, sir, she replied. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I am very discouraged and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. You know, that's what we do, isn't it? When we're discouraged, pouring out our heart to the Lord. And I love what happens here. She says, don't think I'm a wicked woman, for I've been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli said, go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you the request you have asked of him. You know, that is amazing to think that Eli the priest said that over her, so it transformed her. She goes, oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. How about us? We have Jesus, our high priest, yeah. who said that his promises are yes and amen. So we know if we come to him with our anguish, with our requests, that he is faithful, he is just to hear us. But I love what Hannah did. So, you know, God heard the cry of her heart. She became pregnant and had a baby. And um, when the child was weaned, Hannah took him to the tabernacle in Shiloh. Sir, do you remember me? Hannah asked. I am the very woman who stood several years ago praying to the Lord. I asked the Lord to give me this boy, and he has granted my request. Very good. 
Now I'm giving him to the Lord. And he will belong to the Lord his whole life. And they worshipped the Lord there. You know, there is such power in a woman's influence and a mother's influence. And I want to encourage all you mums. Don't underestimate what you carry and the investment that you give to your children. Don't underestimate the words of life that you can speak to them. You know, we don't always get it right. I'm sure Hannah had her moments with Samuel. But, you know, she was willing to dedicate him to the Lord. And what's incredible is if you know the story of Samuel, there'd been a real um, drought in Israel. Not many people had heard from God. There was a real, um, real lack of words, a real lack of vision. And here's Samuel, this young boy, and he hears the word of the Lord. He hears God speak to him, and he became a prophet to the whole of Israel. Now, I don't know if Hannah had that in her heart when she was crying out to the Lord. She just wanted a son. But, you know, God in his faithfulness raised, not only gave her a son, but gave her a deliverer for Israel, you know, someone who was willing to speak the words of God. So I think, you know, mums, ask God to give you a fresh picture of who God is raising up your children to be. You know, I've heard of Susanna Wesley. I don't know if you've heard of the Wesley um, brothers, Charles, and there's another one. John, thank you. <laughs> it helps to have your notes. But um, they're incredible theologians, you know, knew the word of God, were able to speak and teach. And they, they talk about their mother, who was a prayerful woman, who prayed for them and demonstrated faith to their kids, to her children. And so mums, demonstrate your faith. When you're struggling with something, take it to the Lord in prayer and take your kids with you because your influence is incredible. And you know what? I'm a teacher, so I know there's a few teachers in the room. And, you know, some days you have your grumpy days where children push your buttons <laughs> and they push your buttons and they keep pushing your buttons and you might not say some nice things or raise your voice, but at the end of the day, the kids don't remember that stuff. They remember the words of life that you speak. They remember how you made them feel when you lift them up. They remember how you made them feel when you believed in them, when you had their back. So I want to encourage you mums with that. Don't beat yourself up for the things that you get wrong, but celebrate the opportunities you have to speak life into your children. And um, as I was praying and preparing for this message, I just felt this is a word for someone this morning. Why try to fit in when you were born to stand out? <laughs> now, I have to confess that it's Dr. Zeus. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I just feel like that is a powerful statement this morning that God is wanting, and it's not just for the woman. There may be some men here where this is God speaking to you. Why try to fit in when you were born to stand out? You know, when you think about your feet fitted with the shoes of readiness, you know, that means that we are equipped with the presence of God. We're fearfully and wonderfully made, created in his image. And who knows the world needs some good news? Yeah? They need some good news. And so when we carry the presence of God, we actually do stand out. So don't try and fight that. It's okay. Don't try and fit in. You were born to stand out. Is that all right? <laughs> cool. So as we think about the shoes of readiness the gospel of peace. I don't know about you, but when I first thought about the scripture, I was like, ah, I immediately thought of, you know, your typical street evangelist who stands on the corner proclaiming the word of God. And I'm like, oh, that's so not me. I can't do that. And then I think of the amazing Mike Knott who walks into a cafe, suddenly knows everyone in the cafe and has led three people to Jesus. I'm like, oh, I'm not very good at doing that either. And then God gave me the sense of... I don't know if this click is working or not, or if I'm clicking the wrong thing. Cool. It seems to have stopped clicking on. There we go. <laughs> so the good news is one size does not fit all. If you've ever been to a shoe shop and you think you're size eight, and then lo and behold, you're actually not, you're a nine, but then you go to the next one and you're a seven. So you know, one size does not fit all. And it's the same with carrying the gospel. We've all been created in God's image. He is creator God. You know, if you walk around, we've got a lovely zoo in Wellington, and I was there not so long ago with my nephew, and I was looking at the giraffe and just going, what were you thinking, God? <laughs> like the giraffe. It's huge. It's amazing the way it walks. And I was just like, creator God, you are so creative. 
you know, and, and that's us, you know, we're all different, not one size fits all. And I feel like we need to be reminded this morning that whatever shoes we're wearing are shoes that God's created for us. And that one size or one idea of what an evangelist is or what someone is that is willing to take God's word is not what it's going to be for all of us. Yeah. So I'm going to start with this picture, the good old Kiwi jandal. Yeah? Who likes jandals? Yeah. I live in jandals for about six months of the year. And um, I remember this day, actually, I used to wear them to the church office. And I remember this day where Mike might have whispered in my ear, I'm not sure that jandals are really office attire. And I said, but these are my dress jandals. <laughs> you know? But I love the sense that jandals, you can wear them anywhere. They're super ordinary. Everyone has them. Um, and so we can, we can kind of disparage the jandal. You know, they're in the back of it. We treat them badly and we don't think they're anything special. But actually, jandals can be pretty amazing because you can wear them anywhere. And they kind of sense of humility, you know? Yeah. Humility, meekness, that ability to, you know, just put on some jandals and you'll be right. And there's a story, well, Jesus is speaking actually about the type of people that are going to enter the kingdom of heaven. This is what he says in Matthew. He says, The king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Come, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me to your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. And I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did this for one of the least of my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Isn't that an amazing picture? that just in the ordinary, you know, we can, we can write that stuff off. We can go, I'm not special, I'm not significant. Oh yeah, I make, a, I make a meal every now and then for someone who needs it. Or, you know, I went and visited that lady last week because she was upset or, you know, but that's just nothing. Don't write that stuff off. Yeah. Because they are the types of things that get God's notice, yeah. you know? They're the type of things that will actually attract people around you. And I feel like sometimes, you know, Jesus said that he came to give us life, life in all its fullness. But what did the enemy come to do? Yeah. To steal, to kill, to destroy. And I feel like the enemy tries to shrink our idea of who we are, yeah. shrink our idea of our influence. <laughs> and I believe this morning God's saying, put on your jandals. It's okay to be ordinary because I'm with you. Yeah. And so when God's with you, you're feeding the hungry, you're touching lives, you're making a difference. So I want to encourage you with this picture. Um, there's beaches that can often get inundated. I don't know if you get starfish here. Yeah, yeah. I know there's lots in Wellington, but the starfish. And, and there's a sense that if you look at this beach and look at all these poor starfish that are most likely going to perish, and you think, whoa, there is so much need out there. Now, we can look at our world, we can look at our community, we can even look at our family and be overwhelmed with the need. And I look at that picture and I go, where would you even start? And there's a beautiful story of a young boy who was on a beach just like this and he was picking up a starfish, throwing it into the water, running back, picking up a starfish, throwing it into the water. And this, this man comes in and he goes, what are you doing, kid? And he goes, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm helping. And he goes, oh, you, look how many starfish there are. You'll never be able to rescue them all. It doesn't matter. And the little boy picks up the one starfish and he goes, well, it matters to this one as he threw it back in the water. And I feel like God's wanting to say to someone this morning, it matters to this one. That person you're praying for, that person you're investing time into, that person that you're getting alongside, it matters to God. And he is with you and he notices. So don't despise your jandals, yeah. all right? Don't despise those ordinary um, that ordinary footwear. Remember that God makes extraordinary things out of the ordinary. My second picture are your gumboots. 
Now, how many people in this room own a pair of gumboots? <laughs> or more than one pair. <laughs> Jeannie even has a bright pink pair, I have to say. Well, uh, I have to confess, I do not own a pair of gumboots. Um, in fact, I don't even remember owning gumboots. I am such a city girl. <laughs> I haven't lived, but anyway, I went to visit a friend of mine not so long ago, and she, her and her husband have got this little farmlet, and she goes, I thought we'd go for a walk, it's a lovely day, and I'm like looking at my shoes and thinking, she goes, we can come and see our new cows, and I'm like, great, <laughs> that sounds like fun, immediately I'm thinking about how I'm going to have to delicately walk in and out of cow manure and mud and I'm just not feeling like this is going to go well. She goes, but don't worry Mitch, I know you, I've got some gumboots just for you. Oh. And so I was like, phew. So I took off my nice shoes and put on the gumboots and it was amazing how freeing it was. Suddenly I wasn't looking at where, my, where I was putting my feet. I was stomping in cow poo. You would have been very impressed with the city girl. <laughs> um, and having a wonderful time. I even walked through a stream. Um, I did come face to face with a cow. I think some women have heard this story before. Um, we turn a corner and we go through a gate and then I turn around and there's literally a cow this close. <laughs> and there was no fence. So I was freaked out. But Danielle, my friend, was very calm. She said, it's all right, it's all right. They're friendly cows. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if there's such a thing, farmers. <laughs> but here I am face to face with this cow. And... Um, we walked back and it was such a relief to get back to the house and to take my feet out of these smelly, dirty gumboots and go, look, I'm untouched. <laughs> my, I'm fine, I don't smell anymore and I'm not, you know, I, I'm totally untouched. And then I just felt that this is a picture of who we are when we walk into dark places carrying the presence of God. We don't need to walk in fear. We don't need to walk... Um, timidly, we can walk boldly and with confidence to the places that God's called us because we know that the muck of the world can't touch us. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. We don't need to be afraid of the world. We don't need to be afraid of choices that people make because we carry the light of the world. It says that we are the salt of the earth. But what good is the salt if it loses its flavour? Can we make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot. But we are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a blanket. Instead, a, light, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Father in heaven. And then I love this, John 1, verse 5. I started with it, I'll end with it. The light shines in the darkness, the darkness has not overcome it. You know, just a tiny match can transform a whole room. And I love the fact that if we're thinking about being men and women of influence, if we're thinking about taking the love of God to people around us, there are some dark places. There are some places where people might not like us, might not want us to come and share what we think are good news. You go, oh, you're ignorant, you're narrow-minded, you, you don't have the truth, you're in the dark ages. You know, we have the presence of God with us. And yes, those are words that can hurt, but we can step out of our gumboots knowing that God's presence is with us. And those words have no power. Those words have no power because we serve a God who is victorious. And we pray from victory, not for victory. Jesus has already defeated the enemy, so we are free. So I want to encourage you this morning, put on your gumboots. Get out there and do some damage for God. Don't be afraid to step into places where you think, ooh, this is a bit uncomfortable, because we know that God's presence is with us. And that the gumboots, you know, the presence of God, his power, his presence, protects us, watches yeah. over us. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Everyone going to go and put on their gumboots this afternoon? Yeah. Don't say hi to some cows. <laughs> My next um, piece of footwear comes with a funny story. Um, so I don't know how many sports fans are in the place. You want like a good rugby game or football? Yeah, so these are the football or I don't know the terminology, football, rugby shoes that you wear to get traction, to be able to stand your ground. You know, the cleats, those little sticky out bits. 
stop you from slipping over or from backing down when you're trying to take ground. Now I, I remember a few years ago I was in this flat and one of the guys in the flat was part of a rugby team. And it was a very social rugby team and the men in the team weren't always super fit. So often the first half they got lots of tries and then the second half they could barely run to keep up with the game. But this guy, he thought that he was the next, you know, uh, Jonah Lomu. He was up there in his talking about his own uh, skills and prowess as a rugby player. And he used to say, I could score as many tries as you like. And I was like, no, you can't. You can't score that tries. He goes, I bet you this, Sunday, this Saturday, it was a Saturday game, this Saturday I could score three tries. I was like, whatever, you won't score three tries. He was like, I, I, let's make a bet. I'm like, bring it on, because he barely scored tries, in the, and it was near the end of the season. I thought it was a pretty safe bet. He goes, okay, if I, if I score three tries, you have to cook dinner for a week for the whole flat. I was like, okay. And if, and if you don't, he goes, I'll cook dinner for the whole week for the whole flat. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a good deal. I, I'm, I'm liking this, so I agreed. I'm like, yep, so the whole flat, we turn up to watch this rugby game, and um, the team were playing, and it was just going as normal, and then suddenly they set themselves up for a try, and then they all did this manoeuvre and waited for my flatmate to come, and they gave him the ball, and he walked over the line and got the first try. They all turned around and went like this to me. I'm like, what? What? I've been hustled. You can guess the rest of the story. Second try, the team set him up, they let him score the try. They all turn around and do a two to me. They get this, he gets across the line the third time. The whole team are like, yeah, dinner for a week. I'm like, that wasn't the deal. <laughs> Needless to say, we had lots of visitors in our flat that week and I did a lot of cooking. And um, I was very annoyed, as you can imagine, but I'd been hustled fair and square. But um, the reason I share that story is because a, a couple of things. The first thing is, be audacious in your ask. You know my flatmate, I can score three tries. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Whatever, you cannot, unfortunately. He found a loophole. But in reality, scoring three tries in his own strength would never have happened. But he was audacious. He was willing to step out and to ask for bigger and to go for bigger. And you know, I might have even made the bet on two tries, you know. But I think that we need to be audacious in our ask. We need to be audacious in our ask. And I remember Rob Reed, who used to work with us uh, back in Wellington, he used to say to me, don't say people's no for them. Right. Don't say people's no for them. And I've learnt over the years that God loves it when we ask for more, yeah. you know? When we ask for more, when we go for more, believe for more, because he wants to give us more than we could ask or even imagine. He's saying, you know, believe me, and I will do it. He says, I will give you the nations as your inheritance. Is anyone believing for a nation today? You know, sometimes I find it hard to believe just for my neighbor. I'm like, God, you said I could ask of you and you'll give me the nations? I need to lift my thinking. I need to expand my horizons. I need to believe you and take you at your word. I need to get bold and courageous in my prayers. I need to be not afraid to ask for more, for believe for more, because God is more than able, yeah. absolutely more than able. And I love this promise in Corinthians. My dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. And that sense of standing and holding your ground, asking the big ask, but also standing and going, you know, I'm not going to retreat. I'm not backing down. My God said he is for me. Who can be against me? My God said I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'm more than a conqueror. I am standing my ground. I am not retreating. Who knows that we need to sometimes put on our rugby shoes or whatever they are, or our high-heeled boots with a good heel and stand our ground and not be pushed back. The other thing I love about that story is uh, my flatmate could never have got those tries on his own. He got the right people around him. <laughs> Very annoyingly so. But you know, we are not on our own. Look around you. It's an amazing group of people in this room. We've been created with a community. And so God puts people around us and we can work together. So share your big goals with one another. 
Share, share your faith goals with the people around you. Say, hey, I'm believing for my whole family, but not just my family, I want to see this. You know, start voicing it out and, and telling a few people so that they can pray with you. And just like that whole rugby team enjoyed the fruit of my cooking, you know, we all enjoy God's seeing people having their prayers answered, you know, and thinking, hey, we were a part of that. We were a part of that. Cool, the final pair of shoes is the good old work boots. Here. Yep, steel, steel cap shoes, another pair of footwear I've never owned in my life. But, you know, this gives you a sense of confidence and a sense of authority. These shoes allow you to go into places where normal mortals are not allowed to, to, to walk, <laughs> health and safety and all of that. And so I love these scriptures. For the Lord your God who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you the victory. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Isn't that a cool picture that God is with us and that we can stand and be courageous because he is going ahead of us? So as we think about, and here's a real traditional um, kind of idea of what those shoes of peace may have looked like back in Jesus' day, the Roman soldiers. You know, we're all part of the kingdom of God. We've all been asked and tasked with sharing the good news of Jesus with those around us. And it says here, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? We've all been sent this morning. Jesus was very clear. He said, you shall receive power when my spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. So that is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of those messengers who bring good news. So this morning, my question to you is, what shoes do you need to start wearing? You know, where do you need to uh, increase your wardrobe, if you like? Do you need to be that person that says, hey, I'm going to stop trying to fit in. God is with me. I was born to stand out. (coughs) Do you need to uh, walk into some dark places with confidence this morning, putting on your gumboots, knowing that God goes ahead of you? Do you need to wear those football shoes, saying, you know, I'm taking ground, I'm taking people with me, and I'm believing God for big things, audacious things? Or am I wearing my jandals, and I'm seeing with fresh eyes the significance of reaching out and looking after the people around me? Or am I I wearing my work boots, you know, doing some damage for the kingdom of God? You know, I'd love us to stand. I want to pray for you this morning. And I want you to think and say, you know, God, where is my wardrobe lacking? Where do I need you to come and and fill me afresh? Where do I need your presence to uh, give me fresh confidence for the work of your kingdom? Because God has called every single one of you. So let me pray. Lord, I just thank you this morning for each person here. I thank you that each one of us have been created in your image, fearfully, wonderfully made, with a plan and a purpose. Your word says that your plans for us are good and not for evil, to give us hope and a future. And Lord, we thank you this morning that you have filled us with your presence, with your Holy Spirit, and that you give us power and confidence to walk the path that you set before us. Your word is a light to our feet, a lamp to our path. So Lord, this morning I pray for each person here. I pray for confidence in hearing your voice. I pray, God, you would clothe people afresh with your presence. That, Lord Jesus, you would remind us afresh of what it means to live our lives as ambassadors for your kingdom. That, God, you'd give us boldness to stand in those dark places. That, God, you'd give us confidence that we are standing in a place of victory. And that we would, Lord, have big dreams. Lord, I pray right now for an expansion of mindsets this morning. I pray, God, you would open people's eyes and minds this morning to the potential and possibilities that come when we walk with you. That, God, you would stir our hearts afresh for what breaks your heart, Lord God. You give us fresh vision, fresh dreams. And, Lord, I just declare expansion. I declare Uh, greatness in Jesus' name. I pray more, Lord God, of your presence, more of your spirit, that, Lord, you would pour out without ceasing. 
And God, I pray for those that are ministering uh, and the, the ones and the twos, for those that, Lord, are giving so much of their time and energy that's perhaps unseen. I thank you that, God, you are our audience of one, that you celebrate every action. And God, I pray for fresh hope and fresh peace to just touch your people this morning. And for our mums, Lord God, investing into their children, Lord, I pray your covering, your protection over them. Lord, give them the wisdom to speak words of life, words of truth, words that will see their children going further and and yeah, more greater than they are. Lord, we just bless our mums today. And we thank you, God, you're with us. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And all God's people said, amen. amen and amen. My parting shot. You can never have too many shoes. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Brilliant. Don't give it away. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. It's the biggest step you've ever taken in your life.